The Elysian Kingdom is episode 8 of the 10-episode first season, and the condition of Dr. Mabenga's daughter is getting worse. Since they're just surveying a nebula right now, he's got the downtime to work on trying to treat her, and reads to her from that book that he's been reading, and as you can imagine, it's the same as the title of this episode. There's a discussion of how she wants the Huntress to help the king, but he explains the point is that the king must be forced to choose between rescue or giving up his greatest weapon. Still, she'd like to change the ending, and he says, Someday, you'll be able to write your own stories with your own endings, with blackjack and hookers. He puts her back in the buffer and gets to work mixing up some stuff, complete with mortar and pestle, no less. And at last... <laughs> that one even better. I've still got my eyebrows this time. Una comes by to say, Nebula or no, there's still stuff to do, like people waiting to be cleared after a shuttle mission. But hey, no, you go right ahead. We'll wait down here in our shuttle while we slowly descend into cannibalism. I think they might actually just be stuck in their quarters, because she tells him to go take a nap before seeing to them, and I doubt she's that mad at whoever's in the shuttle to make them wait just because. Meanwhile, the buoys from their little survey have all been collected. You know, everything's going fine for once. Yep, the plot is showing up right on schedule. Hammer says that the warp core is fine, despite the fact that they're not moving. So Spock suggests clearing the nebula with thrusters and then trying to create a warp bubble. Maybe someone put a boot on the ship. Was the Enterprise parked illegally? As Dr. Mabenga arrives on the ship to treat Ortegas for getting injured during that lurch, only to find the bridge has been redone in a sort of I had a coupon at Pier 1 kind of way, he then discovers that he's dressed just like the king from the story. All hail the king! Wow, that promotion finally came through, huh? After the titles, it's quite clear this is either an extremely elaborate prank or well, these people have no idea they've been given a makeover. Pike and Ortega start competing for who can better serve Dr. Mabenga, so he's going to have to look into this himself. I can't really argue with that. That is what I've come to expect, really. Dr. Mabenga rightly surmises that if either everyone's out of their mind or just me, play the odds and assume it's me. He figures maybe whatever exploded in his face is affecting him, so he'll need to head down to sickbay, but he's distracted when Pike refers to the nebula as a fog that has engulfed the kingdom. Sorcery is a coward's weapon. Give me a clean kill by sword any day. Is it? I don't know. In a world of magic, it seems more like the sword is an idiot's weapon. Anyway, Dr. Mabenga heads for sickbay and finds the halls are just as overtaken by this whatever the hell it is as the bridge. Ditto sickbay. Chapel is apparently in charge down here, but he sees to his own treatment, thanks. The readings say he's perfectly fine. Chapel, though, has heightened dopamine. Yeah, the word dope definitely springs to mind. Laan soon arrives as Princess Talia. She was mentioned earlier. She, uh... You know, actually, I don't remember. I'm going to assume that she talks to animals. We'll see if that works out. Queen Nev, the baddie, has invaded Laan's kingdom looking for the Mercury Stone. And imprisoned my subjects. I mean, I scarcely escaped with my life, not to mention my poor little wounder. He's in the break. That's, uh... Oh, I mean, if she's that's just terrible. You know... I'm technically right that she talks to animals, but I have a feeling the spirit of my guess has already been disproven. She says that he needs to use the Mercury Stone to stop Queen Nev, or they're all doomed. My king, the princess is right. If you are not prepared to use the power of the stone, then allow me to lead an attack against the Crimson Guard. What happened to sorcery being a coward's weapon? Field Marshal Haig is most anxious to eliminate all these German spies. Filthy Hun weasels fighting their dirty underhand war. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of our spies, splendid fellows, brave heroes. Keep in mind that only looks like Ortega, so I can criticize her all I like. 
Meanwhile, the Crimson Guard are dragging Hammer through the halls, and that really is Hammer. He knows who he is and has no idea what the hell is going on around here. They seem to think that he's a wizard and plans to do him in. And while Dr. Mabenga tries to use book lore to defeat them, the Crimson Guards say that Queen Nev, a uh, shocker, no longer follows the rules. Well, there's nothing that Dr. Mabenga can really do about that right now. Even leaving aside the numbers, this fantasy is utilizing the bodies of the crew. Kill those guards and you've murdered three members of the crew. And that's not going to look good on any doctor's record, with the possible exception of Phlox. Queen Neb will be keeping Wizard Caster here, in the deepest part of her dungeon, at the center of a realm surrounded by her most powerful forces and weapons. Right, plus you've got to be lucky when you roll for initiative. Laan thinks that an attack would be suicidal, and Pike suggests diplomacy with the evil master of the dark arts. Ortegas is all in favor of fighting. Thank you, sire. Starfall is thirsty. A ridiculous name for a sword. It is. Look, don't get mad at me. It is a stupid name. I didn't write the episode any more than I picked out Laan's outfit. I will sing an epic song. I'm not saying that I wouldn't have chosen it. I'm only saying that if I had my way, the sword wouldn't have a name at all and La'an could talk to animals. Anyway, Dr. Mabenga intends to use diplomacy to start and Pike and Ortegas will escort him. A sound causes the latter to whip out Slicey Stab Face or whatever, but it's just Spock, who is a wizard too. And what is to keep us from simply marching in there and taking him? The Swamp of Infinite Death. It's even worse than the regular kind. Dr. Mabenga promises to free Hammer if Spock will help, since he knows the two are brothers in this fiction. And possibly in reality, Spock has more unknown siblings running around than Liv Tyler probably has. Spock leads them around the swamp thanks to a Jeffrey's tube and straight to Queen Nev. Turns out to be Ohora. This, of course, is a trap, so that she can get the Mercury Stone out of the king. Fine. I'll let my torturers drag its location out of you then. They love their work. They're very thorough. Now, given the context, it's probably Kirk singing Mr. Tambourine Man. They get tossed into the dungeon, aka the transporter room, with Hemmer. So that part of the mission is a success. They're all playing characters from a children's book called the Elysian Kingdom. Yeah, you might have noticed in the beginning that the book's cover doesn't match that. But uh, you know what? I do think that the book's cover actually sounds and looks more like a children's book should. Anyway, Hammer says that he was in engineering when this whole mess happened. He felt a consciousness press against his own, but his telepathic experience blocked it. Hammer thinks that whatever the source is, is in the nebula. Not on a ship in the nebula, actually in the nebula. If they want to look for it, they're going to need to use the ship's sensors. And fortunately, Hammer has a laser that can cut through the lock so they can get to engineering. You were about to lose your head. Be grateful. Your queen is feeling merciful today. I will give you another chance to earn my favor. I wonder if that is because of the nature of this situation. There's the threat of peril, but actual peril is impossible. Even the murderous queen won't murder today. Mind you, I wouldn't want to put my theory through a live fire test. In the end, Pike gets Dr. Mabenga's permission to run away and Numbers wins the day until the Huntress arrives. Arrows are fired, but not lethally, and the Crimson Guard is driven off. Getting to engineering reveals that the nebula contains a consciousness within, but no body. A Boltzmann consciousness, Hammer theorizes. Dr. Mabenga doesn't particularly care, he just wants us all to stop. So Hammer figures the entity is drawing the story from Dr. Mabenga's mind, so perhaps hurting him in some way will cause the entity to sever the connection and put a stop to all this. But what's distracting Dr. Mabenga is Una and Ortega's laying on innuendo of their shagging, and I mean really laying it on, like in a way that makes Benny Hill look sublime. 
He's not distracted by the girl on girl of it, though, but the fact that it's happening at all. The story is wrong. These two characters don't even know each other. Someone is shipping them in real time. That can only be his daughter. Well, they go to check, except she's not in sick bay. Spock overhears Hammer and Dr. Mabenga discussing his daughter and presumes that makes the kid the Mercury Stone. Uhura plans to take her and to help out. She's had Pike captured and brought before her. And he is perfectly prepared to switch sides. And I mean fast, too, like, like Judas Iscariot owes money to the mob kind of fast. Meanwhile, they can't track down where the kid went. But while Dr. Mabenga assumes the worst, that she's being kept away from him, Hammer wonders if she's simply been taken to a place where she wants to be. So they go to his quarters, but the moment they arrive, Pike has a knife to his throat, and Ohora is on hand to take the kid on the assumption that she's a weapon. Well, Dr. Mabenga and Hammer decide to lean into their roles, threatening to unleash their might upon her. Abra! Nice, but was there any particular reason you drew that out, or did you just really like hamming it up? Well, the kid is indeed in there, all done up like a princess, and more importantly, cured. Her friend did it, she said, the one who made this story for her. Well, her father says it's been fun, but this has got to stop. People are getting hurt. Hammer volunteers to let the entity speak through him so this can all get straightened out. Well, the entity is really all, you were a shit dad at him, not getting why she was in the buffer this whole time. It finally sinks in that he was trying to cure her, something that even the entity can't permanently do. That means, like he said at the beginning, the king needs to make a choice. In this case, it's between the crew and his daughter. If he wants to leave, he has to let her stay and join with the entity. Well, she departs with the entity that she's named Deborah, which we find out because she returns to him at this moment after years of being gone. You know, one of those wacky, non-corporeal sitcom moments. She's happy now and wants to make sure that he's going to be too, that he'll work towards finding his own happiness now that he no longer is consumed by his need to find a cure. So everything is put to rights. It's as if the last five hours never happened, for the crew or for the ship's logs. But he does finally tell what happened to Una as the story ends and we can finally use the transporter the way it was actually supposed to be used. For hiding weed. Continuing from the last review, the Elysian Kingdom is fine. It's an excuse to put everyone in costumes and let them put on a pantomime. The same way that our man Bashir put everyone in costumes to act out James Bond. It's an unexpected way to resolve Dr. Mabenga's personal plot, but it's fine. The book you might have noticed from the screenshot is a callback to Sisko's character in Far Beyond the Stars, which again brings to mind the actors playing other characters thing. What thinking upon these two episodes does for me, though, is reveals why this comes across as just fine. Dr. Mabenga doesn't feel like he's learning things about himself along the way, or that this reflects characters stretching beyond what we would normally see from him. It's great that he and Hammer both get a prominent role here, but look, let me reiterate, it's fine. The episode succeeds in doing what it's set out to do. It just feels like there is the potential to be more than that. Ooh. <sighs>